What's going on everyone and welcome back. Now I do want to point this one thing out real quick. If you're sick of Computex news, maybe I'll take a break after today unless something really big hits. But right now, that felt like this was a very important topic because there seems to be a little bit of confusion. I was even confused on some things and hopefully this will help clear the muddy waters on the topic. So what we're talking about is the new Ryzen 3000 series and the X570 chipset and compatibility. So AMD just recently launched or rather announced their lineup of Ryzen 3000 series parts. And I want to go through that lineup real quick, starting at the bottom and then ending up at the top. So at the very bottom, we've got the Ryzen 5 20. So at the very bottom, we have the Ryzen 5 3600. It's a six core 12 thread part with a 3.6 gigahertz base and a 4.2 gigahertz boost coming in at $199. Then we move up to the Ryzen 5 3600X. That's a 6 core 12 thread with a 3.8 gigahertz base and a 4.4 gigahertz boost for $249. And that's come with the Wraith Stealth and the Wraith Spire. Yeah, Wraith Spire respectively. Now moving up to the Ryzen 7, we get the 3700X, which is an 8 core 16 thread part with a 3.6 gigahertz base and a 4.4 gigahertz boost for $329. And then the Ryzen 7 3 3800X with again 8 cores and 16 threads but this time with a 3.9 gigahertz base and a 4.5 gigahertz boost with a price point of $399 so coming in where the 1700X was originally in the first generation and then we have the new one the big boy the current flagship that we may see get uh, replaced actually added to later but right now it's the Ryzen 9 3900X that's a 12 core 24 thread part with a 3.8 gigahertz base and a 4.6 gigahertz boost for $499 and those last three all come with the Wraith Prism cooler and the first of those the 3700X is a 65 watt part while the other ones are 105 watt TDPs Res well not respectively but both of them but the big kicker here is we have the X570 chipset, and that is the new chipset to replace the X470. So you have X370 for first gen, 470 for second, and 570 for third gen. Now the big thing here is this is an all PCIe 4 uh, setup, and there is a good and bad about that in the sense that it is going to affect compatibility with CPUs on the X570 chipset, but it's also going to affect compatibility with third gen Ryzen on X370 or B350 or A320. And a big reason for that, and AMD was right in you know um, mentioning this, when the AM4 socket was introduced, there were only four core CPUs. And they were the Carrizo based um, desktop variants. So the A series, which we actually had one that we played with, it was the 9800 um, Pro. Yeah, the A10-9800 or A12-9800 rather. And it was a quad-core APU. And then they moved into the Ryzen series, which was an 8-core 16-thread. And now we're up to 12 and potentially 16-core parts on the same socket. But now we're running PCIe 4. So that's going to come into some conflicts between compatibility. AMD does provide a chart, and that's what we're going to throw up on screen right now. And we're definitely going to reference this chart as we go through here because this is very, very important. See down the left hand side, we have the various chipsets. Across the top, we have generations of CPUs. You can see it's got first gen Ryzen, first gen Ryzen with Radeon graphics, second gen, then second gen with Radeon graphics, and then third gen with just Ryzen processors. Interesting, we've got the second gen Ryzen processors with Radeon graphics because that's not actually yet been announced. So those are pretty interesting to see there. But what we see here, if you look at the top, X570 is not going to support the first generation Ryzen processors, whether that's with or without graphics. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with the way the chip is configured because it does have compatibility for second generation. If you look around here, that's the only, that's one of the only two places you're going to see compatibility issues. Otherwise, the X470 chipset is going to work across the board. B450 is going to work across the board. X370 and B350 well, that's where things get interesting. Again, if you notice over all the way over for the third generation Ryzen processors, you see selective beta BIOS update needed. So those are definitely going to be the ones that are specific to the vendors and whether or not they 
done their part to make sure that the motherboards are up to par, whether that be uh, the traces, the electrical componentry, the VRMs, what have you, and if they're willing to do the validation to make sure that those third generation Ryzen processors are going to work on those older motherboards. Now, ASUS has said that they were going to do what they had to do to make sure that they worked on there. There's uh, questions whether or not MSI is going to have that support. At least with this, we see that it's not just entirely on the motherboard makers. And if you see their A320, well, third generation, you can hang that up. That's just not going to happen. So hopefully this brought a little bit of clarity into the idea that not, well, X570 is not going to support every Ryzen CPU because there was a part of me, because I'm running a first generation and my system behind me, it's a 1700. And part of me saw some of the new motherboards and thought, man, I really like those motherboards, especially that Crosshair 8 formula, because I've got a Crosshair 6 Hero. And back in my AM3 Plus days, I had the uh, Crosshair 5 formula. I love that board and was thinking, hey, cool, I can get one there. But my chip's not going to work in it. So I'm left with, do I get the, C you know, I don't want to get the whole package, but I mean, how many people out there are in the same boat? You thought maybe I'll upgrade the motherboard or I'll upgrade the CPU, then the motherboard. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be kind of hard to tell. I mean, you're going to have to check if you're on first generation, either one. If you're on a first generation Ryzen and you want to get an X570 board, you're going to need a new chip. But if you've got an X370 motherboard or a B350, it's going to be up to the motherboard manufacturer whether or not you're going to have support on that. So again, I hope this brought a little bit of clarity and at least opened some eyes maybe and brought some attention to the compatibility issues that may exist between here. That's one of the one of the benefits of an AM4 platform is the longevity. So we went from seventh generation APUs all the way to third generation now, Ryzen CPUs on the same socket, but things around that socket have moved. So love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. Did it kind of catch you off guard? Was it something that you were expecting and not really that big of a deal? Love to hear your thoughts. It's been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure that you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you and the next one.